for you, what's the what's the lesson you need to be reminded of that you continue to struggle with or continue to have mistakes around the most that you have to often relearn for yourself? Oh, wow. You know, you don't you don't get angry anymore. But if that was one that you continue to have to relearn on how to have peace when you're angry, what's what's something that you still struggle with? I probably don't take uh, good enough care of my health. Mm. Now at 86, I look back when I was 26, I should have should have started then. You know, and I could probably take much better care of my health because I have no intentions of slowing down. So. Do you have a you have a full time nutritionist and trainer? No. Oh, we gotta we gotta get you on on that ASAP, Bob. We get we need you around for another fifty years, you know. Well, I've got the Blagio book for my hundredth on uh, July of two thousand and thirty four. I'm going to do a seminar at the Bellagio. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. you've got it booked already. Yeah. Yeah. You already got the deposit down. You got the date. Yeah. You got everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's cool. I like that. Yeah. So, so you got um, it now. You got to so you got it in your mind, and you got it physically. You got the date booked, yeah. but now you got to do the action steps in between. Yeah. To make sure you can uh, manifest it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I could. Uh, I could treat myself better physically. I just going at such a rapid clip all the time, you know. What What's it gonna take? for you to commit to either uh well i'm just about at that point now i'm I'm really i'm really at that point right now i'm in lockdown here so it's you know they're getting through to me and um the house is being rebuilt it'll be done in about a month and we're talking about uh, really building a gym there so i'm on the Mm -hmm. right track Here's my challenge to you, Bob. You can you can decline or accept. My challenge is to hire someone full time to be your dedicated health and wellness coach that works with nutrition. Maybe it's two people, but someone that works with nutrition on you and someone that is there in person at least three days a week helping you with movement, physical rehab, prehab, training, whatever it might be, to keep your body moving as well. Um, so what day can you what okay, day can you I'll commit tell you what, by? Before by the end 1st? of the month, before the end of the month, okay. I'll have you who those people are and what I'm doing with them. Perfect. Yeah, and it's got to be they've got to be full time, like full time. invested. No, no, I'll you've do got, that. You've got the money to invest in it. You've got to you got to have, and they can be virtual on Zoom right now. I don't care if they can't come in person. You can do it over Zoom, and they can coach you that way. So I'll get it done. I will have a nutritionist and somebody to work with me physically. I have a guy here who's Mr. Canada, um, and he's always phoning me. He's going to be shocked. There you go. I'm, I'm going to give him a call. <laughs> we we got to make sure that you, uh, if that's the biggest challenge for you, then I you will gotta, have you I will have it. that to you by the end of this month. I'll Perfect. have it done. You'll you'll text me and and let me know. I will. Yep. Okay. Text me with the coach in the first session. I will. You'll that? know who they are <laughs> and what they're going to do. Great. Great. I love that. Where do you want to continue to learn? What's the thing that you want to continue to learn personally that you haven't mastered yet? Well, I want to learn more about the mind. Hold on a minute. Mm-hmm. There's, I'm going to, here's something that, I want you to just listen to this. This is this is one of the best pieces of literature I have ever read. I'm going to read it through. It's only about 20 lines. And then we'll talk about it for a few minutes. Great. My mind is a center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before, something entirely new, not included in past experience, though proceeding out of past experience by an orderly sequence of growth. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my own special world, in which I am the center, it will move forward to produce new conditions always in advance of any that has gone before. 
I'm going to, um, I'm just going to photograph, I'll take a picture of this page and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. That, Please. The start of this is the key. My mind is a center of divine operation. Now, if I held a basketball here, there's only one point in that basketball that's center, isn't there? And that's determined by the outer measurements of the ball. Agreed? Mm -hmm. There's only one center in this studio. I don't know where it is. I don't even know how to find it. But I know somebody would know how to find it. In all things, there is only one center. This literature says my mind is a center, which would indicate there's more than one center. Mm. So if you study this long enough, and I finally figured out why, this, the man that wrote this is one of the most brilliant writers I think I've ever studied, Thomas Troward. My mind is a center. When you're, de deal when you're dealing with divine operation, you're talking about infinite. There is no outer ring, so any point center. Hmm. Your mind, Lewis, is a center of divine operation. And the divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. This means the production of something beyond what's gone before. So there's something coming. It's going to be better than everything in the past. I'm going to send this to you. I want you to read it every day for 90 days. Okay, yeah. Send it to me. I'll this print it will out. stretch your mind. When you say, what do you study? I want, to, I want to expand my awareness. I want a greater awareness of my relationship with the whole scheme of things. Isn't it crazy that we are standing on a moving ball in the middle of infinite space? Yes. Yeah. When we, when we think about that sometimes, that it's, we're on a little ball, a little dot on a little ball that's rotating yeah. in the middle of infinite space. Yeah. <laughs> moving at a ridiculous speed. Do you know, the more you study this, the more you realize what a magnificent creation you are. When you stop and just take a look at your hand, there's enough potential energy in that little finger to light up this building for probably a month. Mm. There's about 11 million kilowatt hours per pound potential energy locked up in the electrons in the atoms of the body. We are a, a living dynamo. The blood circulates through your body hundreds of miles of passageway every 33 seconds, carrying all the food and all the garbage out, boom, like that in one sweeping change. For you to move any part of your body, you must activate brain cells. The brain is an electronic switching station. The more we study and look at this, the more mind-boggling it is. You know, we're taught we're God's highest form of creation. Um, that's taught in all religions. There's only a half a dozen religions there in California. You've got, I think, 500, but everybody starts their own there. <laughs> And the truth is, you can start your own religion there, and many do. Mm -hmm. But there's a half a dozen major religions. They all teach essentially the same thing. We are truly God's highest form of creation. And we act sometimes not much better than some of the animals that we keep as pets. You know? You, I think, shows like yours do such an enormous amount of good. Mm, thank you. Well, what you really do, you provoke people to think about a lot of different things. And if people will begin to think, thinking is the highest function we're capable of, and thinking can be taught. Unfortunately, it's not being taught, but it can. You know, it's highest function we're capable of. You know. So it's, um, it's worthwhile learning. Absolutely. I think a lot of us are, we're not taught to think, we are conditioned to react in, well, to no what's happening around us. And we, and we react, we don't think before we react, we just react. And so that's what 
causes us a lot of stress and overwhelm. You know, Victor uh, Frankl uh, wrote a marvelous book, Man's Search for Meaning. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yep. He, uh, well, he, he was a marvelous author. And he said, in every situation, between the situation and your response, there's a space. It might only be a, a millisecond. But in that space, you have the ability to choose how you're going to react or respond. When you react, whatever you're reacting to is in control of you, whether it's another person, a condition, or a circumstance. When you respond to the same thing, you stay in control. Ooh. So when you react, they're in control. The environment is. When you respond, you're in control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sandy Gallagher, my partner, she was, she has a niece. Her niece was at her house one day, and I happened to phone, and she says, would you talk to Anna for me? And um, she was having a problem with her mother. And I was thinking, well, probably you're right, but I would imagine your mother thinks she's having a problem with you, you know? And um, what they were doing, she was reacting. And I got, I got explaining it to her. I said, listen. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter what happens. You have a choice. You're either going to react or respond. When you react, you have lost control of you, and you've given control to the other person or the conditions or the circumstance. When you respond, exactly the same situation, nothing's changed, only you respond. You could say, I wonder why she's saying it like that. I wonder why she wants me to do that now. I wonder why she's upset with me. Well, her mother apparently, if I get this story right, apparently got a hold of Sandy and wanted to know what the hell was going on with that when she went home. She was so different. That's, what, that's a huge lesson to learn. 